wealth, yoga, wine. Welcome to my podcast, Valerie Hale. Adversity. Some of the blackest clouds carry the shiniest silver linings. Many of you know, if you've been listening to my podcast, wealth has nothing to do with what is in your bank account today. While I share lots of different ways to help you achieve wealth in all your different facets of life, this is really not about money. It's about what you're thinking and about your mindset. Dr. Price Pritchett wrote this amazing article about how to address adversity. And he postulates that when adversity first hits us, it's natural for us to be in shock and to be dismayed and dangerously negative. We only look at the downside of adversity. And he challenges us that the people who make it through the darkest times are those who seek out the potential good in adversity. I know this is the most difficult thing to embrace right now, especially in a pandemic. Dr. Price Pritchett tells us we need to give more and equal time to thinking about what possible good can come out of adversity. How do you do that? Not only how do you do that, but it feels unnatural. And it feels as though we're abandoning maybe the person to whom this happened or the situation. Once again, though, the idea is it will bring strength and it will bring potential good to us when we focus our thoughts on how to create good out of a bad situation. How, and what steps can you take then to do that? One thing I like to do is I like to make lists. Mary Morrissey also talks about when adversity strikes, don't react. Give it three days. And then during those three days, remember that there is potential good out of the darkest times. It's not going to happen immediately, folks, but dig your feet in and believe every day you're going to get closer to something potentially good coming out of this. When I make a list of a situation that is traumatic or seems disastrous, then I look at the top two or three items that I can actually act upon And they can be small. They don't have to be large, emboldened acts. They they can be, as I said, they can be something little like writing a letter. Write a letter to yourself about the situation. You don't have to send it to anybody. There's something very cathartic about writing in connection with your brain, especially if you can write about what would I love to come out of this situation. When you speak words such as that, what would I love? Your brain is already creating a much better scenario for you. Dr. Price Pritchett also talks about the fact that this does feel unnatural and we are disciplining our mental capabilities to change this scenario. Therefore, be patient with yourself. Understand that Looking for the potential good in adversity is simply going to take practice. And what I suggest, don't stay in the moment of the tragedy. Look for some kind of soothing music. I know this is going to sound goofy and woo-woo. Practice yoga or some kind of meditation. Go for your walks. Get out there in the environment and realize the world is much bigger than what's inside of us with the tragedy that we're dealing with. And think of this, some of the most tragic situations, child trafficking, domestic violence, nonprofits have arisen 
to help us help these people who are in these traumatic situations. Again, out of the darkest times, the darkest clouds, we can have silver linings. Focus on that. Don't react, but respond within a few days to the situation. Kundalini Yoga. Hey, Mercury's in retrograde. <laughs> Speaking of doing yoga, <laughs> Mercury in retrograde can be a difficult time. And I know some of us are going to feel despondent and despair during these next few weeks. The way that the planets are aligned, I know this is woo-woo for some of you, the way the planets are aligned has an impact on our mental thoughts. And on my website, shayvalerie.us, C-H-E-Z-V-A-L-E-R-I-E. All this, of course, is on the, the podcast details. Click on yoga. Har Prakash is my virtual kundalini yoga teacher. And I can promise you she's doing classes for Mercury in retrograde. What happens is things slow down. They have a tendency to, it seems like if they go backwards, you can't make progress in what you would really like to do. My suggestion for this time, while Mercury is in retrograde, just surf, just coast. Don't try to go uphill because you're just going to go backwards. Look for little things that you know you can accomplish. Mercury in retrograde makes us feel a little depressed. Therefore, the other thing, as I mentioned before, play some music that's relaxing or fun, uplifting. Again, go outside. Nothing worse than staying inside all the time. Wine. I am seeing an uptick in articles and information about vegan wines. For those of you who don't know about veganism, it's absolutely people who want nothing to do with any kind of animal products. I'm a vegetarian, but I don't go down the vegan road. I'm a strong believer in what your body needs, and I use local honey to build my immunity system. Regardless, vegans think that you, they believe that They want nothing to do with any kind of an animal product, so they go beyond vegetarian, being a vegetarian, and really they won't eat honey and they won't have any kind of milk products. Wines that are claiming to be vegan are wines that use no kind of filtering with animal products. Historically, producers, winemakers, would use the bladder of some animal, I think it's usually a goat, to find, filter their wines or they use egg whites. However, there are thousands of producers who don't even filter their wines. Therefore, my suggestion to you is don't even worry about asking for a vegan wine. Ask ask instead when you're going to your geeky wine store, which I hope I have drilled into you now and not using the chain stores, they're going to know about unfiltered wines. Quite honestly, a lot of wines that come from the Rhone region in France, a lot of the Spanish wines, they don't like to filter their wines. And that's all you need is an unfiltered wine. So quit worrying about this trend about vegan. It's goofy. It's Valentine's Day almost. It's one of my favorite holidays. Valentine's Day and Halloween, I totally love. I know that you will probably be thinking of big, heavy Cabernet or a Malbec or a Zinfandel. You know, most ladies like bubbles. I am a bubble head. And I realize Valentine's Day goes both ways. Men are involved with this. Women are involved with this. For me, romance are bubbles. And I suggest you don't have to do Tattinger. You don't have to do Perrier Jouet. You can certainly do a nice Prosecco. I love I love rosés, and they have beautiful sparkling wines that are in the rosé format now. Enjoy Valentine's Day. When the inn was open, I tried to do Valentine's Month. It never worked. <laughs> we 
we did Valentine's week, never worked either. If Valentine's Day was on the weekend, we did get a bonus. We always had two days reservation. Recap. The darkest clouds have the shiniest silver linings. Don't focus on the negative. Don't don't think dangerous thoughts. Train your mind to think of potential good. Yes, it takes mental work to do this. Yes, it feels unnatural. So just do a little bit every day to focus on what is the potential good out of adversity. Mercury in retrograde. It's just going to feel like you can't get anything done, that the progress you were making has gone backwards. Therefore, I suggest go to my website, sign up for a class in, in Kundalini Yoga, send me an email, and I'll send you a three-minute Kriya on Mercury in retrograde yoga. And, of course, wine. Don't worry about the vegan stuff. Don't, don't worry about anything that's trendy. Go get a nice bottle of bubbles. We really have so much to great, be grateful for. Mary Morrissey says you, you were, every morning you wake up, you are given another day of life. So go get lots of bottles of bubbles. Merci. Au revoir.